morning we are continuing the sermon series change in which we've been looking at seven words for our lenten season that can promote change in our lives we've talked about words like yes and no and this morning we talk about the powerful word thanks uh, as we are starting to look at this incredibly positive yet difficult to apply passage from paul in his letter to the church at thessalonica we hear these words and Oftentimes, we don't think about how it really impacts our lives. Ideas like rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. And that sounds really nice on a greeting card, maybe a nice motivational poster somewhere in the youth room of a church. But in real life, that's really hard. That's really hard. You mean to tell me that you want me to be grateful thankful in all circumstances no matter what Paul I'd say that Paul doesn't know my life doesn't know your life he doesn't understand what we're going through except for the fact that Paul actually was pretty blatant about sharing the long list of hardships that he endured throughout his ministry if anyone knows what it's like to endure incredible misfortune and hardship broken relationships natural disasters shipwrecks imprisonments assaults and physical ailments it is Paul, and this is the guy who's telling us in this church to give thanks in all circumstances. I guess he means it. But let's talk about why this is difficult. Why is it so hard to say thank you sometimes? Well, there's times and seasons when it feels like life is piling on. You know, those circumstances that aren't so hot. You, you, you know what piling on is, right? It's the safety foul that gets called in football games when the ball is down, but guys keep jumping on the guy who's already down, or when the guy gets knocked out of bounds and the late hit comes in and smacks him when the, game, when the play is over. In life, it's when you get hit by one hardship after another. And I see this all the time. We've seen it in just the last three years together that some families seem to get piled upon by hardship and misfortune and loss. Someone loses a spouse or a parent and in rapid succession it seems like the dominoes fall, relationship woes, a child in crisis, financial disaster. The old saying is, when it rains, it pours. There's a stand-up comedian named Tig Notaro who came to national attention a few years ago for doing an emotionally vulnerable set in which she shared the story of losing her mother in a terrible accident being hospitalized with C. diff, a disorder of the gut, her partner breaking up with her and then being diagnosed with cancer all within six weeks. It's not easy to be grateful when you feel like you're getting piled upon. But that's not the only time it's hard to say thanks. There's a lot of ways that it happens. For one, there's the spirit of entitlement that seems to be very rampant in our world today. We often throw this word at young people, but I think we're all capable of it, that feeling of being entitled, that we're owed something, that we're owed everything. While we may see a strong sense of entitlement among the younger generation, I think the reality is that all of us feel entitled to some things. We have some idea of how life is going to be. We have hope of what we're going to have and when we're going to have it and what we're going to achieve and when we're going to achieve it. And disappointment when it doesn't go that way. Or when life doesn't happen at the pace that we would like it to. It's hard to give thanks sometimes in circumstances like that. There's also the simple lack of gratitude that comes with proximity and time. You may have noticed this if you've been in a relationship or you've been married for a long time. It's when you start taking each other for granted. You fail to be grateful for one another. It's not that you aren't grateful for your partner. It's just that you begin not to say it or express it as much or as often. So you don't say thank you for loading the dishwasher or driving the kids to school. I realized this week I hadn't thanked Denise for taking time off of work to keep the girls during spring break. That was a big sacrifice that she made. She's a therapist and she has clients and I know that they're going to pile up and need to see her after spring break. But I was taking it for granted and didn't say a simple thank you until that Thursday when I was preaching on thank you and I said, I probably ought to do this. Then there's just the plain old ingratitude. You know, the, the, the mean kind. The kind you hear from your children when you cook them dinner. 
Okay, the kind that I hear from my children when I cook them dinner. Um, Maggie and Lucy are, are wonderful children, and, and I love them very much. And they are learning to express gratitude and say thank you without prompting. But the only time that it doesn't come out seems to be after I've worked all day and came home and cooked them a good nutritionally balanced dinner, and their response as they walk into the kitchen is, yuck, I don't want that. That's gross. I'm not eating that. Here's the thing. I love to cook. I'm a good cook. I'm not my mom, but I'm a good cook. I bought this food with money that I earned. I made this for you with my own two hands, you know, to keep you alive. And all I get is, Daddy, we eat spaghetti and chicken and tacos every week. I just want something else. Anything else. So after I was less than grateful for my daughters for a little while, I said, all right, let's work on a menu together that will give you some different things on it. We can work together, you know, because I'm an awesome, responsible dad. We radically changed our menu, coinciding with trying to cook and eat healthier as a family. We haven't had spaghetti in weeks Fresh fish twice a week. And do you know what these little monsters say now? Fish again? Yuck! I don't want that! Our children are Israelites wandering in the wilderness. They are receiving manna from heaven. And all they do is complain that they want something else. There are so many ways, so many circumstances that can make it hard for us to say thanks. And I think the Apostle Paul knew that. I think that's why this is a command and not a suggestion. Give thanks in all circumstances because I think inside us somewhere in our hearts we understand that gratitude and thanksgiving and praise, these things are good for us. And I think most of us want to be more grateful. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love to complain and whine, but I know it would be better for me if I learned to say thank you more often. I hope it would be better for my relationships. And that's what these brief few verses seem to be all about. That God's will for us is joy and connection and gratitude. That these are the things that are good for us, that God wants for us. Social science shows us that gratitude is good for us. Psychologists have found that people who express a general gratitude have decreases in stress and anxiety and depression as well as an overall increase in feelings of well-being. And interestingly enough, as a side note of this study, they found that if that gratitude was directed toward God, those negative things decreased even more, and the positive feelings of well-being increased even more. So I've armed you with all this wonderful information, and we know in our hearts that gratitude, saying thanks, is a powerful tool, but perhaps you're thinking to yourself, Self, I am still a whiny, ungrateful complainer, and I consider myself part of that club, so don't feel too bad. Don't feel like you're alone. Here are some practical things that you can do to cultivate gratitude in your life. Eliminate when-then thinking. We all do this a little bit, when you are prob and you're probably familiar with this on some level. It's when I get this degree, then I'll be successful. When I'm in a relationship, then I'll be happy. When I get married, then I'll be fulfilled. When I have kids, then I'll have purpose. When I get that raise, then I'll be satisfied. The problem with that kind of when-then thinking is it puts everything into the future. And there's always going to be another when. There's always going to be another thing that you're striving for. But when you're always striving for that next thing, you learn to not be thankful for what you have right now, what's happening in this moment at this time. Remember that great saying, that great song, that great psalm, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, today, not tomorrow, not after you get your degree, not 2.5 kids from now, today. Rejoice, be glad, give thanks for what you have and what you are and where you are in this moment. Because when we're doing the win-then thing, all we're doing is putting off our happiness for the future and not acknowledging all that God is doing now. And we're failing to give thanks for it. The second thing you can do is to literally count your blessings. I learned this great lesson from St. Oprah of Winfrey uh, when I was in college. <laughs> Oprah was on daytime, I had some free afternoons, and she did this whole thing on gratitude and how important it was. And she said, start a gratitude journal. And I 
listened to Oprah more than I've listened to Jesus at that point in my life. And I started a gratitude journal, writing down three to five things that you're thankful for, no repeats. It has to be three to five things that are different every single day. It doesn't always have to be serious, life-changing things. I remember writing down things like, I am thankful for Chipotle burritos, the smell of cut grass, Tylenol, modern medicine, Coke Zero, a new Star Wars movie. But also in there were things like Denise's love, Lucy's warm hugs, Maggie's strength of character, the church, salvation, forgiveness. There's so much to be grateful for that we take for granted. Around our dinner table at night now, we've started the practice of going around the table and everybody has to say something that they were grateful for that day. Just one good thing that happened. And sometimes it's serious and sometimes it's silly. Lucy was just glad that she wasn't it one day during tag. It's a gift sometimes just to be grateful. And the final thing, and I think this is very important, this has been transformative for me, is remembering that it's never too late to say thank you. It's never too late to say thank you. One of the greatest gifts of my life has been those times when I've received a letter out of the blue from someone that I knew or met or served as their pastor years ago who say thank you for something that I don't even remember saying but impacted their life in some way that they describe and say thank you for. There's all sorts of people in my life who are unknowingly instrumental in me becoming who I am today. Teachers and friends and youth directors and Sunday school teachers, my wife Denise, our daughters, our parents, fellow clergy. All you have to do is, is hop in the imaginary time machine and think back to who was responsible for making you who you are today. Who impacted your life in such a powerful way that you would not be here if it weren't for them. I wrote thank you notes to former pastors, my former youth director, my fourth grade teacher and seventh grade English teacher, the girl who invited my brother to church that got us on the path of going to church together regularly as a family. Thank God for Jennifer Johnston. I wouldn't be here without her. You can blame her. It's a gift sometimes just to remember someone and let them know. Thank you. Thank you. You don't remember this. I know you may not even remember me, but thank you. You know, it's a gift. There may be people you can't find or people that have passed on, but you can still offer up a word of thanks, whether it's in a prayer or writing it down. You know, being thankful in all circumstances isn't easy. In fact, in certain times, it's incredibly, incredibly difficult. But if you practice gratitude regularly, it can change your life and the lives of those around you for the better and it will be easier to see those things that you're thankful for, even when it seems like you are in the midst of the darkest and most difficult time in your life, because you will already be in the practice. You'll already be thinking about it. You'll already be going, what am I thankful for today? Even when the darkness closes in around me, there's still a little bit of light that gets to shine. While we're on the gratitude train, I just want to say thank you for each of you. Because I'm grateful for you. This has been a hard, hard, hard several weeks to be United Methodists. As we've dealt with the decisions of General Conference, whether you agreed with them or disagreed with them, whether you support or don't support, it has not been easy. But I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful for each of you that has prayed and thought and considered thankful for the fact that you have said that this is my church, these are my people, and I'm going to be here. That we're going to work through this together and strive to be the people that God is calling us to be in the midst of this. It's not an easy thing. Circumstances have been tough. But I give thanks for you. I give thanks for your conviction, your purpose, your principles, your faith in the midst of this. You make me proud to be your pastor. Thank you. Let us pray. Almighty God, so often we confess we fail to say thank you.
thank you to one another. Thank you to you for the many blessings in our lives. There is so much good, even in difficult times. There is so much that we can look to and say, I am blessed, I am blessed, I am blessed. Help us, O oh God, to focus our hearts on gratitude and thanksgiving. Help us to share that gift with others, especially in times when they may be going through difficulty, and they may be struggling. Help us to live out that gratitude in the way that we help them, the way that we strive to be light in the midst of darkness. God, may we always find a reason to give thanks in all circumstances, at all times for who you have been, for who you are, for who you continue to be in our lives. We give our thanks and praise.